So this is a pretty interesting story. This is a comment from a former House Speaker John Boehner. Now, I find John Boehner to be an interesting uh, character because he was a speaker at the time when the Tea Party started to really gain rise in its power. And it's, it, it provides for a really interesting political science dynamic. Um, but here's what John Boehner said. He was talking about Obama not making deals. He says, how do you work, quote, with people who call you a Kenyan Muslim traitor? Um, and so it says, former Speaker John Boehner said he understands why former President Obama might not have been inclined to work on bipartisan deals with Republicans during his eight years in the Oval Office, asking, how do you find common cause with people who think you are a secret Kenyan Muslim traitor? In January 2011, as the new Republican House majority was settling in and I was getting adjusted to the speakership, I was asked about the birth certificate business by Brian Williams of NBC News. My answer was simple. The state of Hawaii has said that President Obama was born there. That's good enough for me. Boehner wrote an essay adapted from his book that was published Friday by Politico magazine. Uh, the former speaker called his assertion at the time a simple statement of fact, but quipped, you would have thought I'd called Ronald Reagan a communist. He says, I got all kinds of shit for it. Emails, letters, phone calls. It went on for a couple weeks. I knew we would hear from some of the crazies, but I was surprised at just how many there really were, Boehner said in the essay. All of this crap swirling around is going to make it tough for me to cut any deals with Obama as the new House Speaker. Of course, it has to be said that Obama didn't help himself much either. Um, and so it talks about the situation of the birtherism, which is incredibly racist, insanely racist, which uh, uh, I would say a majority of the Republican Party is at least covertly racist or kind of keeps it under wraps. You never really truly know whether or not somebody is a racist because in public they might, you know, not be racist towards other people. But then once they really kind of get behind closed doors, they're super fucking racist. Um, so you never really know. But obviously there was a heavy amount. You guys seen that John McCain clip? You know, where there was that, uh, the crazy lady saying, you know, what did she say, Obama's, like, uh, an Arab or something like that, and he said no, you know, that, that was definitely a very, uh, you know, a uh, good comment from John McCain that I think history will look back really well at him for that comment, um, and he had a lot to lose in that situation too, by the way. That's really my equation. I've kind of created a sort of coefficient for this in terms of giving credit for someone doing something is what do they have to lose for that? Because if all they have is a benefit from it, then why would I give the person credit for doing it? They benefited from it. It's, it's good for them. It's the only logical thing for them to do. But for John McCain, he lost, you know, he's going to lose a lot of Republicans from that comment and that kind of rhetoric. So he definitely deserves credit for that. <clears throat> um... And so pretty much what had happened was, uh, and a lot of Republicans had called Obama like lecturing and haughty, as you can see here, um, just uh, uh, being a sort of uh, very lecturing as to, oh, you should do this, you should do that, you should listen to this, you should listen to that. Uh, but what happened was John Boehner was forced out of the speakership because the Tea Party was so fucking crazy. They were insane. So a lot of people make these connections between the Tea Party and like the current progressive movement. The Tea Party and the current progressive movement are so different, first of all, because the Tea Party had a lot of corporate backing. But also uh, it, what they were doing was they said, we're just going to literally stop anything from happening. We're going to stop like stuff that's already passed through legislation. We're going to stop the implementation of it. And so they were just scorched earth. It's way easier to put a wedge into something from happening than actually getting stuff passed. Getting things passed is actually very difficult. Getting things not passed is actually much easier. You only really need like 20, 30 members. Uh, and when you have massive corporate funds and a lot of racist people, um, it's really not that hard. And so that's essentially what they did. John Boehner had to end up stepping down because he got forced out and he got tired of them. I remember John McCain, you know, calling out Ted Cruz. One of the reasons why uh, Donald Trump won the 2016 election was there was not a, a sort of coalescing that you saw around Biden in 2020 in 2016. They could have coalesced around Marco Rubio. Ted Cruz was number two. But the establishment hated Ted Cruz. He was this douchebag Tea Partier who was preventing, you know, uh, these government benefits uh, from its people, people who needed their social security payments or Medicaid, and they were starving, no food, you know, no uh, food stamps. So the establishment Republicans hated him. So that's why they didn't coalesce around him. And I think that if he wasn't that, if he was a typical Republican, they probably would have coalesced around him. 
Now, the one thing I want to say here is, you know, when he says, how do you work with people who call you a Kenyan Muslim trader? There are kind of a couple ways to interpret this. One way would be like, oh, you know, it would be a defense of Obama not working with those people because there seems to be a group of people who think that Obama didn't reach out to Republicans. And then there's a group that thinks that uh, Obama did reach out to Republicans and it just didn't work out. So if your assessment is that Obama did not reach out to Republicans, you are dead wrong. Obama tried really hard. It was basically his philosophy to try to, especially in the early days, when he had, <laughs> oh God, when he had the best numbers in Congress, that was when he really spent the most time trying to reach out to Republicans. In fact, the reason uh, why uh, Hispanics ended up turning on Hillary towards the end and then Joe Biden uh, is because the Obama administration had started to inflate the numbers of deportations in order to try to get Republicans to sign on to their uh, immigration legislation. And what ended up happening was the Republicans said, no, fuck you. And then the Hispanics were like, dude, what the hell? You're selling us out. So it was a complete failure. And that's why they ended up hating Biden. Um, but these are some uh, comments from some political scientists on the matter. Um, this one... Uh, this one says, I think that Obama attempted to negotiate in good faith with congressional Republicans about budgetary issues and that the constraints on the House leadership made it almost impossible for the House to negotiate with Obama. In short, there was nothing more Obama could have done to negotiate more effectively. And I would agree with that, you know, and I'll explain what I mean by that later. Uh, this says, relations are indeed a two-way street for a long time, perhaps too long. Obama tried to live up to his campaign pledge of transcending partisan polarization. For example, the development of the Affordable Care Act in Congress dragged on and on because Obama, along with his congressional leadership, was intent on some Republican buy-ins from the likes of Senator Susan Collins and Charles Chuck Grassley. That the Republicans in the end were unanimous in rejecting the Affordable Care Act was not Obama's fault, but theirs. So there's a couple of ways to frame that when you say it wasn't Obama's fault. And the reason why I agree with these comments is because he did try to negotiate with them. But that was fucking stupid because what you did was is you presumed that those Republicans, um, even the corporate ones, were good faith actors, especially even if they were good faith actors. At the end of the day, elected officials are essentially uh, very receptive towards uh, their, you know, electorates, right? Their uh, constituencies. And so if their constituencies are just hating Obama nonstop and that's all your entire uh, you know, campaign becomes, your anti-Obama campaign becomes is saying, fuck Obama, uh, you're going to have to vote against it. And so he wasted so much time, so much effort on trying to reach out to these people when he couldn't get any of their votes. It was a waste of time. You know, he had a short span of time. I think it was like, uh, I want to say like nine months or something like that, where he had a supermajority in the Senate. Uh, he should have really fast-tracked a lot of shit through that time that he had. Uh, but he didn't. And he spent too much time on the Affordable Care Act trying to reach out to others. He was too weak in terms of getting his own party in line. I forget who it was, you know, whether it was, ha um, was it, uh, was it Joe Lieberman who prevented the uh, public option from getting through? But his failure to really, you know, get his ducks in a row in the party was also a big failure. But he did try to reach out to Republicans, man. Um, Here's another one from another political scientist. It says, The president attempted and indeed included Republican ideas on tax cut and the stimulus package as a means to get a bipartisan bill. The centerpiece of health reform, the individual mandate, was originally a conservative Republican approach to health reform. Cap and trade was also a conservative market-oriented approach to dealing with climate change. Finally, in an effort to reach a grand bargain on the budget with the House Speaker, the President was apparently willing to consider reforms in Social Security and Medicare that would have antagonized his liberal base. The President went out of his way to pursue his liberal ends through conservative means, but the conservatives in Congress and the media were intent from the outset to obstruct his agenda, no matter how conciliatory. So Obama absolutely made a lot of uh, you know, concessions, and yeah, he did try to do that what was it? It was like the chain uh, security, social security thing, like uh, that would have lowered social security payments by, I don't know, like 300 bucks a month or something like that. Bernie Sanders was out there with his megaphone opposing it. Uh, he did. He did offer a lot of those things on the board. 
but Republicans were not interested in working with him. And so the mistake to really be learned here is these Republicans are not good faith actors. Don't waste your time on trying to convince them and giving them, you know, uh, concessions or whatever and holding hands with them. Screw them. Do what you got to do. And that's get your party in line and pass, pass the things that you can. And so you had 60 senators for a bit. You could have got a lot of stuff through then. But he wasted way too much time trying to get Republicans in. And then he also uh, failed to really be a bully pulpit guy and saying, hey, you're going to vote against this? I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to go to where your state is and I'm going to hold rallies against you. I'm going to be going out there and campaigning against you and turning your own constituency against you. But Obama never did any of that. And so what Obama proved was he was really great at campaigning. He was great at giving speeches. He was great at all this stuff being witty. But when it came to legislating, the guy was garbage, man. I, it was so stupid. I mean, his plan was to work with these people who were already determined to obstruct the guy from day one. And then once you wasted all your time when you had real numbers to get stuff through, you got your clock clean forever in Congress um, throughout the rest of your, you know, first and second term. And by then, you don't really have any means of getting anything through because now you're getting obstructed by Republicans. It was just, it was a gargantuan failure. That's what it was. And so when you know that there's these people who are not good faith actors, please, God, don't spend your time wasting, you know, don't waste your time trying to convince these people by giving them a bunch of concessions on stuff, uh, which I think was Obama's biggest failure.